Hey guys, it's Jacoby back here in another video, and today we are playing Monster Jam Urban Assault. This is my first ever gameplay video on my channel, except for those two little Minecraft ones I did a while ago. But, um, yeah, this is Monster Jam Urban Assault. So, uh, yeah, let's get started with this. Actually, I want to go back real quick, actually. Hold on. Oh, where is it? Options. No, right there. We're going to start a brand new game. Do a full playthrough of this game on YouTube here. I beat the game already. That's my other account. I'm just going to make that one real quick. Just, just call it Kobe, I guess. That's one of my favorite childhood games. This is one of the childhood games I, uh, I've been play I've played a lot when I was a kid. Probably one of my all-time favorite Monster Jam games. I love this game. So yeah, we're gonna do it. World Series, Speedster, Smasher, and Stunt Man. And some of the little bit of glare at the bottom of the screen. Sorry about that. But um, yeah, Monster Jam Assault. Assault. Let's do this. I guess we'll be Grave Digger for the World Series, I guess. We got Scarlet Bandit, Max D, Shadow Knight 9, Stone Crusher, and Monster Mutt. We'll be Grave Digger for the World Ladies Series. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the father of freestyle, Grave Digger. I spent hours playing this game back when I was little. Alright, round one Ford Field Freestyle. That's the Air Force Afterburner. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's one of my all-time favorite games. Let's do this. There you go. Do a reverse donut. How about that? I think you don't see those anymore. <laughs> I find it funny that they account, they you know, they count front flips and back flips in this game as for, uh, you know, moves. When at the time, Monster Jam Real Life, this time this game was made, 2008, I believe, 2009, back flips didn't really, there wasn't no one completed, completed a back flip yet in the Monster Jump yet. Pretty funny. I believe the first back flip competition was Northern Nightmare in Jacksonville, 2000, not Northern Nightmare, uh, Nitro Circus. Uh, in Jacksonville, uh, 2010, less than the first backflip of that match that was happened. These are one of the most, most legendary shows out of Monster history with Jacksonville, 2010. Probably one of the best shows ever. And we're going to save it and go right to a wheelie, a sky wheelie, which really was, it was actually slap really. Front flip. Another slap, really. Endo. And now let's do a freaking flat spin. From 40 out 40. How about that? Perfect score. Yeah, compared to... Compared to the first Monster Jam game that Activision made back in 2007. Black Stallion. And Spitfire. Compared to the first game, this one is actually a lot easier. It is a lot more easier. At least to me, anyway. It's a lot more easier to get, you know, to win stuff. The first game was very challenging, especially for the World Finals. That, that, that shit was hard. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I'm gonna try, I'll try talking a lot. I don't wanna, you know, stay silent and freestyle to pour the hell out of you guys. This is my first gameplay, you know, series. So bear with me. 
Bear with me. It's kind of funny, you know. I I re I uh, last was it last year before the beginning of like yeah beginning of last year right before this whole COVID nonsense came around. I uh, I bought because my I originally had Urban Assault on the PS2, which is in my room, but it got so banged up and scratched up that it didn't work anymore. So I got it on the Wii, which is what I'm playing on right now. I got Urban Assault on the Wii, which is what I'm playing right now, obviously, and uh. I just told you, and uh, yeah, it's funny, you know, when I first started playing this again on the Wii, after being away from it for so long, I still had so much, I still me easily remembered all, almost all the courses and trucks, it's pretty funny, I remember so much of it. Oh god, save it, save it, save it, save it, there we go. And I apologize for the reflection at some point, so the light kind of goes, in, the wood. Right behind where I'm sitting, there's a window. So the TV faces right towards that window, and I'm over. It was still enough to blow the way, though. Blow away second place, so. I feel like you unlock tr trucks a lot faster in this game, too, than the other one. Maybe it's just me. Here we go, racing in the Tacoma Dome. Or Tacoma? Tacoma Dome? I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's the Comodone. I'm not sure if you remember. Not away, another spectacle point. Gotcha. The first spectacle point is... Okay, this is the one we have to go all the way around. There's, a, there's one just like where you have to race this up to the middle. This one's going to go all the way around. And I got it. By a long shot. Yeah, this game isn't really that hard. This game is easily, like I said, one of the most favorite games of Monster Jam. Of all the Monster Jam games. My favorite has to be the 2007 one, just because of the amount of time I played on it. I played this one a lot during my childhood, too, but that was a little later on. 2007 was definitely one that I played a lot on. I remember being like five years old playing that game. And... We were stuck on the, we were stuck on, I think, yeah, the Alamo Dome. And that, cause the Alamo Dome in the first Monster Jam game is uh, one of the hardest freestyles. It's like the one where you have to, it's the one you have to do right before World Finals. And it's a super hard freestyle. It's like 38, like 36 to win it. Or something like that. I could just remember my, me and my dad playing hours on that just, just to try to beat it. We finally did. But yeah, there's, there's been a lot of memory cherished to these two, to those, these two games. That's the reason why I love this game so much. That's because the tracks are huge in this game. Freestyle tracks are a lot bigger than they were, they were in the 2007 game. You often can't destroy everything on the track in just a minute, just in two minutes, because there's so much to hit. So yeah, if you guys want this uh, series to continue, <coughs> sorry my voice, if you want to see me continue this series, yeah, comment down below. I'll definitely continue to do the whole game if you want me to. Shouldn't be that long, shouldn't be that long of a series, I might say like, you know, like 36 episodes or something like that, it shouldn't be that long. It definitely won't be that long. I don't know, I'd probably say, you know, 10, 12 episodes, probably make it a series. I want the episodes to be kind of halfway long, that way I can get a lot done. Maybe I'll play the other game, 2007, if I'm done with this one. Or I can play some other games, you know, I got a whole bunch of games I can play. 36. Another freestyle win over Scarlet Bandit. By 10 old points. Orlando. 
Even when it gets really hard, I feel like World Finals in this game is actually really easy to beat. Look, it's down to like the end of the world too. It's still just super easy. Pumping the side of the ramp. So I'm kind of quiet here. Just listen to the sound of the game sometimes. Even the sounds of this game are nostalgic to me. Just the, sim the simple engine sounds and the Scott Douglas commentating is still super nostalgic. So I listen to it sometimes. Uh, so PWW Wildfire is tomorrow, not tomorrow, Monday. That's the last wildfire until Money in the Bank. So this week will be the last wildfire and the last deep freeze before Money in the Bank, which will be on the 21st. But that could change if, you know, plants come up or anything like that. And yeah, I got Bill in that stage right now. It's almost done, actually. I need, I need to just finish spray painting the backdrop, but I don't more black spray paint. Hey, move under. I have more black spray paint, so I gotta get over to Ace or uh, Lowe's to get some more black spray paint. Or even Home Depot, but that's don't really need to. That's out in New Hartford. I don't have Home Depot in Rome. We have I have Lowe's and Ace, which I'll definitely be able to find some there. So and that's got a little bit of light details in the backdrop, and then maybe a little bit of details in the stuff I already did, and then we go. But the stage is... Oh, God, I'm messing up here. Yeah. And I'll land on top scroll, man. Why not? Yeah, the stage is going to be cool. It's going to be like a, it's gonna be a giant Money in the Bank briefcase in the middle of the stage. Two dollar signs on the side. Two big dollar signs. And, of course, the black backdrop will have, like, a little light detail going across it. Not LED. Just, yeah, just the light detail. I can print off the computer. Stick them on. Yeah, it should be a good event. Four matches. Four good matches going right in the bank. Not a bad pay per view. Speaking of wrestling, uh, WrestleMania Backlash, a week from tomorrow. And you already know I'm watching it because I'm a WWE fan. If you're new to the channel, and if you're just getting to know me. I am a big WWE fan. Always have been, ever since I started watching it. It was low at first sight for WWE. And Mosh Jam, too. <laughs> Speaking of that, while we're playing Mosh Jam here. So, you guys ever played Urban so. You guys watch here play Urban Assault. Do you have the game? The console do you have it on? Curious to hear your answers. Do your guys like a backflip flat spin thing? And these games sometimes do get a little hate, like the Challenge 7 and 2009. Uh, Urban Assault. These, these games do kind of get some hate because, you know, they're kind of unrealistic. You know, like the trucks. They do fly around a lot and, you know, like really insane air and like flips and everything, you know, kind of 
But I think that's kind of more for him. It's kind of like an arcade kind of feel to it. That film, but I don't really care. It's still one of my favorite, most favorite games of all time. I don't know what the heck that was. Yeah, watch this air right here. Holy shit. <laughs> 3 out of 40. Yeah, it's going to be a backlash. I can't wait for it. Got some good matches. Bobby Lashley versus McIntyre and Strowman for the World Championship. Can't wait for that. Now we know it's qualification because it's a triple threat, obviously. Then you got Cesaro and versus Roman Reigns, which, honestly, I expect Roman Reigns to retain. I don't expect Cesaro to win, but... I do want Cesaro to win. Cesaro should have been freaking world champion like five years ago. He should have been the top champion five years ago. And the fact that he still isn't is sad. That he still hasn't been yet is sad. So, who do I think should have won? I think Roman Reigns should have won, but who do I want to win? Cesaro all the way. Although I am a Roman Reigns fan. I got a Roman Reigns shirt on right now actually, but I do want Cesaro to win. Although I do think Roman's going to win. But who knows, because on SmackDown yesterday, the throwback SmackDown. Oh, shit. Well, I ain't going to cut it. Wow, I still won. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, yesterday on uh, throwback SmackDown, uh, Jimmy Uso came back. After his torn ACL injury, he's been out for like a year and a half almost. And uh, that's how we saw him at WrestleMania last year. He just came back and he told Roman that uh, he he uh, he's nobody's bitch. He's not gonna boss around with Roman like Jake J is. And that could cause another uh, family storyline for the Samoan family, the bloodline. That could, that could cause another storyline for that. My prediction, I think. Oh, I messed up. My prediction, I think, is that. Uh, what was I gonna say? Brain fart. Yes, that Jey Uso is going to help Roman again. Roman's going to be down to Zaldre to beat him and to pin him, ready to finish the match and win. And Jey's going to, of course, help him again, try to help Roman win, win his match for him. And Jimmy's going to try and and stop it. And so it caused whole bunch of confusion. Maybe Seth Rollins will get involved with it because, you know, he's hit him and Cesaro, Cesaro in a big feud. Um, who knows? Actually, yeah, you know, Seth, Seth could get involved because uh, Seth and uh, Jey Uso seemed like they had uh, yeah, Seth and uh, Roman Reigns. They were backstage. Uh, it's actually cool the first time you saw Seth and Roman kind of like talk to each other in a long time. Give me another shield there, the days in the shield. That's cool to see how, how much they've changed. Seth was pissed off because, you know, Jay cost him the win. Well, Jay and, well, the Usos cost him the win, he, th he thinks, and, uh, well, Jimmy did. Seth said Jimmy cost, uh, Seth the win. And Seth said, you better talk to your cousin, or I will, or I'll deal with it. I'll deal with him, and Roman said, leave the family to me, and Jimmy had a little talking to for Roman, and then Jay Jimmy told him that he ain't Roman's bitch, and walked off. And then all in all, the, the night ended with, uh, the night ended with, uh, Roman and, Roman talking to Jimmy and, you know, telling him to get out of here if you're not going to, you know, acknowledge him, acknowledge him about that, and then, Jimmy was walking, Jimmy was walking out of the ring, walking out of the arena, and Cesaro came out from behind him, destroyed Roman, put him into the corner, destroyed Jey Uso with a, a bunch of uppercuts and then a flying uppercut in the air. Lifting him up and did a flying uppercut. Then hit Jimmy with a neutralizer because Jimmy tried to help. He was kind of conflicted and confused, so he tried, he tried to help his brother out. And Seth gave him, uh, Cesaro gave him the neutralizer. And then also gave Roman the neutralizer to end the show. So it's definitely cool to see Cesaro, you know, destroy all three of them at once. 
And yeah, I really hope Cesaro wins. He honestly could. I mean, I think Roman's still going to win, but I think he, you know, I can honestly see Cesaro becoming the champion. Destroyer unlocked. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna do Oakland right here, and then the next, then the next race, and then we'll call it quits for episode one of Urban Assault. Tracker hit my favorite tracks. Nice nice I tell you, mate, most, I, actually, yeah, probably all of you don't know this. Um, new new uh, channel, new people on the channel are old. Uh, I, my brother, my brother, little brother Connor, he, uh, seven years old, but uh, he, uh, in 2019, I uh, helped coach his T ball team. He joined Rome. Rome Baseball League there, and he's on T-ball. And me and my dad, uh, and a uh, few of my brother's friends' dads, um, they uh, helped coach that first year. It was really fun. Had a lot of fun doing it. And in 2020, 2020 last year, he was supposed to go into uh, coach pitch, which is kind of the next level for the Coast Guard pitchers here, because the T-ball they go up, they hit off the tee. is really easy. But uh, coach pitch with that coach's pitch to you. It's a little more advanced. With a catcher or something like that. It gets a little more advanced. And they couldn't because of, you, you know, the scandemic. And now we're finally getting, do, getting to it this year. Had three practices, and today was supposed to be the opening game. But it didn't happen because of rain. We got washed out with pouring all day. So it's going to be on Tuesday. Which is good because the uniforms for all the teams were running late. They, you know, they were, they were, they were running late on shipment, on getting there, and they weren't supposed to be there until nine o'clock this morning, which is, so, so that basically meant there was a chance that we could play our opening game without uniforms. So that'd be a little embarrassing. So, you know, I guess you could say in hindsight it was actually kind of good it got canceled and washed out today because that now we can actually get our uniforms and have our uniforms for the first game. And the kids can have their uniforms for the first game. And the coach had their shirts and stuff. Yeah, our team colors yellow. And the teams are the team names are sponsors. So basically, the teams are sponsors. Uh, our team is Centro Welding, which is named after one of the kids on the team. His father owns that business, and that's our that's our team sponsor, Centro Welding. So yeah, look a lot of fun. We have nine game season, probably a little more now since uh, this first game was canceled. So yeah, look to be real fun. All right, last race here. Last race here for part one. Now, and we'll uh, shut it off for, for part one. Easy money. Alright, well, thank you guys for watching. Part one of Monster Jam Urban Assault. We'll kick off part two next time. With, uh, we'll face Stone Crusher at the Edwards Jones Dome freestyle. And we don't have that much left until the World Finals. Yeah, we're really close. So we basically did more than half of the World Series just this one episode. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you at part two. Monster Jam Urban Assault. Peace out, everybody. Be good people.